Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence tutorial on soft modding the Sony PlayStation Portable. So by the end of this video, I'll show you guys how to take your PSP game library and back it up onto the memory card so that you can avoid breaking your discs like this one. I'll also show you guys how to take your original PlayStation library, rip it, convert it, and store it on the card since the PSP is completely backwards compatible with the original PlayStation. So a couple things to note before we jump in, there's tons of different versions of firmware out there that all have different kinds of install methods the one that I'm going to show you guys is the 6.61 Infinity. It is my de facto standard. I've tried a bunch of the other ones. This one's by far the best. And the reason is because 6.61 is the last firmware that will ever be released for the PSP. So you're going to be running your custom firmware on top of kind of the latest and greatest firmware that's out there. Um, additionally, the install instructions are the same for all four hardware families. So whether you have the PSP Go, the 1000, the 2000, or the 3000, the instructions are exactly the same. The only difference is if you're doing the Go, there's a different firmware file that I'll point out to you guys when we build out our tool chain for doing this. Um, one of the things you're gonna need if you don't have a Go is a memory card. So I got this adapter off of Amazon for $5 and it is a dual micro SD to Pro Duo adapter. And I'm gonna be running dual 64 gig micro SD cards in it. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I read online in a forum somebody said you couldn't do 128 gigs So I'll show you guys it totally works, but it does come at a cost of speed So the menu navigation is a little bit slower than my dual 32 gig card It's just one of those trade-offs you guys are gonna have to decide if you can deal with for me It totally works because it doesn't impact gameplay at all. It's just the menus All right, so I'm basically gonna be doing the mod on this 3000 Sony um, it is running firmware 6.60, so we're going to have to upgrade it to 6.61. Uh, and I'll show you guys how to do that. But first, I'm going to start by putting this memory card into here. And in settings, I'm going to go up to format memory stick and hit yes. Okay, now that our format's complete, I'm going to plug USB into the computer. Alright, so when you plug the PSP USB into the computer, it should automatically pop up just like removable storage. Um, if it doesn't, go into your settings on your PSP and change the USB settings to connect manually. Um, but here you'll see it pops up and because we formatted it, it's created this file system hierarchy on the PSP for us. And you can see that we're showing 128 gigs of storage. So I'm going to follow the instructions from this gbatemp.net thread. Um, basically, the only thing you need to watch out for, if you have the PSP Street E1000, Infinity will break your device. So please understand what kind of hardware you have and what you're about to do before you jump in there and do it. Um, so the first thing we need to get is the Infinity installer, and we could download it from here. Um, but I'm a fan of downloading stuff from the developers. So I found the website at infinity.lolhacks.org. Um, basically, we're going to download version 1.0, so I'll save that. And I'm going to get the infinity configuration file too. Uh, the pair of these will come in this file if you just want to grab it from here. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is pull up the installer, go into stage, and I'll extract this PSP folder straight into the root of our PSP. If it asks you if you want to replace, say no, you want to merge. Um, this one did it automatically for me. And then I'm going to open up the config 039. Um, and inside of here is just a stage folder. So I'm going to extract that into PSP game and I'm going to put that folder in there. All right, so the next thing that we need to get is the firmware. This is the PSP Pro custom firmware that I'm going to grab. So I'll download the file and save it. And now we'll open that up. And again, I will just extract this straight into the root of our PSP. All right, so we'll close that down. Okay, the next thing we need to get is the official firmware. You're going to need 6.31 and 6.61. If you have the PSP Go, you're going to want to grab these two files. If you have a 1000, 2000, or 3000, you're going to want to grab these two. Since I'm doing a 3000, I'm going to grab that second set. So I'll go ahead and save that file. Alright, so now if you look at the instructions here, it's going to tell you to update to 661, um, and then basically we need to put 631.pbp and 661.pbp into the maker folder. 
So let's take a look at these two. Um, looks like 661 is still downloading, so I'll pull up 631, and we'll just extract that into the root of the PSP. And quit. All right, next we'll open up 661, and we'll again extract this into the root of our PSP. So I'll go ahead and quit. Now if we look in our PSP game folder, we have our whole tool set here ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and eject the PSP and we'll unplug the USB. Okay, so now I'll hit circle to go back out of the USB menu. And we'll go down to system settings and then system information. And you can see here we're running version 6.60 of the official firmware. So if you are at 661, you can skip this upgrade step. If you are at anything lower than 661, uh, let's go update the firmware. So we're going to do that by scrolling over to game, going down to memory stick and hitting X. And at the bottom of this list now is the update for 661. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, here we'll hit start. And we'll scroll to the right, hit accept, <clears throat> hit X. All right, once the update's completed, we'll hit X to restart. Now we'll check our software version. And you can see now we're running 661. Okay, so now if we try to run the firmware builder, we'll see that the games cannot be started, the data is corrupted. Um, this is because we're still on the official firmware, so we can't run any homebrew stuff yet. So what we need to do is run this ProMod C2P VCFW. And we'll hit X. And we'll hit X again. And now if we go look at our software version, we'll see that we're running ProMod C2P. So you can stop here. Your PSP is running a custom firmware. The problem is, as it is now, when you reboot, it'll revert back to official firmware. Um, you can run the patcher every time you reboot, and it'll totally work. But the next steps that we're going to do are going to make this a permanent mod that will persist through reboots. So the next thing we'll do is run this Infinity Firmware Builder, and we'll build the hybrid firmware. All right, now that we've built our Infinity firmware, we'll plug the PSP USB back into the computer again. Okay, so here's our PSP plugged in on USB. And basically the next step is to copy data.mfc from the maker folder into the flasher folder. So we'll go into PSP, into game, and into maker, and we'll copy data.mfc, we'll go back to flasher and paste it. and then we'll eject the PSP again. Okay, so now that we've disconnected the computer, we'll circle back out of the USB menu. We'll go all the way to the right, over to game and memory card. And now we'll run the Infinity Firmware Flasher. And we'll start, and we'll hit X to agree. All right, we'll hit X to reboot. And this error means it worked right, so we're going to hit circle to repair. All right, we'll go through the initial setup, just default everything. And now that we've installed the Infinity firmware, we'll check our firmware version. And you can see now we're running 661 Infinity. So now we need to install the ProMod C2P again. So we'll go back to Memory Stick. And we'll go down to the VCFW. I'll hit X and X again. And again, we'll go check our firmware version. So now you can see we're running 661 Pro Mod C2P Infinity, um, which is exactly where we want to be. So now the last thing that we need to do is go back to our memory stick and we're going to go into the Infinity configuration. And we're going to go to the left arrow, and I'm going to hit X next to Pro CFW, and I'm going to hit the home button and hit yes. So 
So now at this point, we have a modded custom firmware that will persist through reboot. So if you want to test it, go ahead and yank the battery out. That'll cause a hard reboot. Put it back in, boot it up, and check your system version. And you should be still at the same modded custom firmware uh, from Infinity. 661 Pro Mod C2P Infinity. All right, so now I'll show you guys how to back up uh, one of your games. I'm gonna use Twisted Metal here from the UMD, and we'll put it onto the memory card. So I'm gonna start by sticking this disc in. And if we go over to game, you can see that it loads from the UMD. So one of the things that the Pro Mod gives us is this extra menu when you hit select. So basically I'm going to go down to USB device and right now it's set to memory stick and I'm going to change it using the right arrow to UMD disk. And then I'll hit select to exit that menu and now we'll go plug USB into the computer. Okay, so we'll plug the USB into the computer and open it up and you can see since we selected UMD disk as our USB device, it's basically all the UMD disks just have an ISO on them. So I'm just going to copy that ISO and paste it straight to the desktop. Alright, so now that we've backed up the ISO from the UMD device, we're going to eject it. I'm going to unplug it from the computer. Um, and I'm not going to show you guys this, you can take my word for it. I'm going to pop the disk out so it doesn't start spinning again. And then on the PSP, I'm going to hit the select button to bring up that menu. I'm going to go to USB device and use the right arrow to change it back to memory stick. Hit select again to exit and I'll plug it back into the computer. So now we'll see it pops back up. I'm going to open the folder. And so in the root of our memory stick here, I'm going to create a new folder called ISO all caps and I'm going to rename this ISO here to twisted metal head on. Then I'll just drag this ISO right into the ISO folder on the PSP. Alright, and once that's done writing, we'll eject the PSP. I'll unplug it from the computer. Alright, so quickly taking a look at the PSP here, you can see there's no game in there. Um, if we go over to game and memory stick, you can now see that twisted metal head on is playing straight off the memory stick. So basically you just repeat that same process for all the other games in your library and that's how you back them up onto the PSP. Uh, so let's jump back on the computer and I'll show you guys how to back up your original PlayStation discs. Alright, so I've already ripped my Tony Hawk Pro Skater original disc to a bin and queue file using IMG Burn on Windows. So the next thing that we're going to do is get an app called PSX to PSP. So I'll just Google for it and follow the first link here. And you're going to want to download this version 142 of PSX to PSP. You're also going to want to grab this file from the comments here, this base.pbp. Um, you're going to want to put that in the files folder inside of the PSX to PSP folder. So I've already done that. Um, so here are my downloads. If you go into the files, you can see here's base.pbp. And I'll just start this up. It's going to start up in theme mode. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to convert menu. And I'll select that bin right off the desktop. And we'll pick an output folder. I'll just dump it right on the desktop. Um, and you can see it fills in all the rest of this information for us, which is nice. If you have a multi-disc game, you can select the second disc here and give it the second bin file and it'll roll it into a single file and the PSP will handle disk switching, which is awesome. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is go to images.google.com and search for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater PSX. And basically I will grab this album cover here and save it right on the desktop. Um, I'm also going to grab a nice looking screenshot. Maybe we'll do this one here. So let me view that image and save it. And then the last thing I'm going to get is a logo. Uh, so I'll just change this to logo. And this first one here looks good. So let's view that image and save it on the desktop as well. And back here in PSX to PSP for the icon. I'm going to use the uh, game image there. For the background, we'll use the screen capture. And for the information, we'll use the Tony Hawk Pro Skater logo. Um, so this is what it'll look like on the PSP. Um, now I will just hit convert. 
All right, so now it's all converted, and you can see we got a funnel compression ratio of 39%, which is pretty nice. Um, so inside of this folder, we've got an eboot.pbp. Um, so now I'm just going to copy this folder from my Windows VM over to my Linux host. Okay, so now you can see I've copied this folder that got generated by PSX to PSP onto my Linux machine here. So I'm just going to rename the folder to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. You don't have to do that, but I think it uh, makes it much more clean. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is plug the U PSP into the computer over USB. And when it pops up here, I'm going to open the folder. And basically I'm going to copy this Tony Hawk's Pro Skater right off the desktop. And then inside the PSP, we'll go to PSP, Game, and I'll paste that folder right here. Okay, so now you can leave all the rest of these folders in here if you want. This stuff will stay in the menu. I'm going to go ahead and remove them because I don't like all that extra stuff that we don't need anymore in the menu. Uh, and I can always go back and reinstall them later, just the same way we installed them the first time. Uh, the choice is yours. I think it's cleaner to get rid of them. Now I'm just going to eject the PSP and let's go take a look. All right, so now back on the PSP, if we go to game and memory stick and look in there, we can see the Tony Hawk Pro Skater from PlayStation game, as well as the Twisted Metal PSP game that we ripped earlier. So now you guys should have everything that you need to back up PSP games, as well as your original PlayStation games, onto your PSP. Um, so something to note when you're playing original PlayStation games is that the home button has a bunch of other settings that you can do, like change the screen size and change the controls. Uh, so definitely jump in there and play around with that. Um, so now I'll show you guys how to install homebrew emulators for NES, SNES, N64, and Atari. Alright, so I've got the PSP plugged into the computer here. We're just going to grab these four emulators, NES, SNES, Atari, and N64. So I had to try a few different versions of these. Not all of them worked, so I'll show you guys which ones do. For Nestor J, just this top one from ME Paradise. Uh, that one seems to work. For SNES 9X TYL, I had the keyword GitHub and grab this one from ESM Janus. We're looking for mod 17.10.23 with the ME mod. That's this file here. For PSP 2600, our Atari emulator, um, we want to make sure that we get version 1.2.0. These seem to be 1.1.2. Uh, so this third one from PSX Place looks like it's the one that works. And for Daedalus X64, I'm going to go to this MU Paradise again and get the R1909 beta. Uh, so that, uh, those are pulling down. I'll open up Nestor J. Um, and if we look in here, it looks like that is just ready to be extracted straight into PSP game. So we'll stick it there and hit quit. Uh, for SNES, if we go into the folder, it looks like that one's ready as well. So we'll stick that right into PSP game and quit. And then for Atari, um, if you go into this folder, it looks like that one will go right in the root as well. So we'll just put that in PSP game and hit quit. And then for Daedalus X64, so I'm going to run the unsigned version here. And we'll extract that right into PSP game. All right, now all that you need to do is fill in your ROMs into the appropriate directory for each of the emulators. Uh, so now let's eject the PSP and go take a look. Okay, so hopefully you guys have a pretty well modded PSP at this point running a custom firmware. I've shown you guys how to back up PSP games. I've shown you guys how to back up PlayStation games. I've shown you guys how to install emulators for NES, SNES, N64, and Atari. Um, even though the PSP is pretty old hardware at this point, I still find it to be a completely useful gaming system, uh, completely satisfying. So as always, stay tuned and thanks for watching.